Hey everyone, it's Maria and today I wanted to talk to you about a book that I really enjoyed. This is Making Our Way Home, The Great Migration and the Black American Dream by Blair Imani. I read this last week. I think I mentioned it in another video that I did, but I wanted to do a whole video just talking about it. I think this book should be required reading in at least, at minimum, high school level classes, but maybe even as early probably as junior high. I will be purchasing it. This is a library copy. I will be purchasing it for school for my kids. Uh, when we get up to this time in history, we go chronologically for the most part. I liked it because right now, especially, I'm having a very difficult time concentrating on chapter books unless they have short chapters or illustrations uh, just because there's so much going on. It's been really, really difficult for, for my reading life this year. <laughs> I actually went ahead and lowered my Goodreads reading goal to 50 books because yeah, it's hard. This book was not hard. I loved it. It's less intimidating than Isabel Wilkerson's masterpiece, The Warmth of Other Suns, which I still have not gotten to. It's on my list. You know, I don't like long books. Long books are so scary to me, but I'm going to get through that one. That's a big goal of mine. This one was very manageable. It had interesting stories in it that I think would engage even younger readers. Lots of facts that I had no idea about some of them I'm going to share right now. So first of all, did you know that Jesse Owens in the 1936 Olympics where he got his gold medals for running, many of us talk about how Jesse Owens was this great American who went and showed Hitler that equality and diversity was a good thing. And that just because he was black didn't mean that he wasn't going to be a good athlete. And so we kind of share that narrative around a lot. I've heard it a lot. There was a great movie that they did on Jesse Owens. But a little fact that did not actually make the movie as far as I remember or any of the history books was the fact that while Hitler did not shake Jesse Owens' hand, and I understand that, wouldn't want to shake his hand anyway, FDR actually did not invite Jesse Owens to the White House to celebrate uh, his accomplishment either. And I think that little story right there, probably even if she hadn't written anything else, that story right there said, said volumes because a lot of the American narrative, I feel like we spend time telling are all the ways that we showed the world that diversity was a good thing and that equality was an important value. But things we were actually doing at home didn't reflect the same thing we were saying. The whole, I learned from what I see you do instead of what you tell me, that's exactly, exactly what we've been doing for eons. So that story right there just set, spoke volumes. I started, oh, that was another habit. I started doing a commonplace, journal where I've written notes. So that's been really helpful too. Another story that I really appreciated was the Harlem Hellfighters in World War I who went, they were from the 92nd Infantry. They fought the longest in the war. American generals actually, they were uh, all black, uh, were the Harlem Hellfighters. Uh, there were several American generals who wrote to the French generals who were fighting alongside the Harlem Hellfighters and said, you need to enforce these Jim Crow laws. You, we can't have them getting used to equal treatment, da, 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 da. And the French who they were fighting with actually said, no, we're not going to do that and treated them really well. It's another story we don't really talk about is the other countries that while we were this city on a hill, a lot of times we kind of get schooled by how other countries have, have dealt with racism and, and changing things. I'm not saying other countries are perfect. I'm just saying that we don't focus on that in our narratives when we're talking to our kids. Another thing that I really took away from this, I remember hearing about the Black Panthers in school. That actually was touched on. But I feel like, and I don't even really know why, but I feel like the things that I heard about the Black Panthers were that they were, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was was portrayed as the nonviolent activist and the Black Panthers were portrayed maybe as more violent than Martin Luther King Jr. And I don't really remember 
anything other than they didn't necessarily buy into his nonviolence and that they wanted to fight for equality. Now, this is another problem, kind of me showing racism that was taught into me from somewhere, I don't know where, that I need to be accountable for changing and paying attention to why that's there. The things that I learned about the Black Panthers from this book were beautiful. I remember reading a middle grade uh, novel years ago, One Crazy Summer, I don't remember, maybe three years ago, which is really great. It's about these three girls and their mom is in the Black Panthers. And I remember reading that book and being kind of confused because I hadn't had a good understanding of what the Black Panthers were. I, I just kind of felt that they were more scary, honestly, um, than Martin Luther King Jr., which again, there are other things that I'm learning about Martin Luther King Jr. that uh, excite me because he wasn't just about nonviolence. It was, it was more than that. It was deeper than that. But all this to say, the Black Panthers that I read about in this book believed in taking care of free lunches for kids. And they believed in, they believed in, in things like queer, um, activism and supporting some of the, the gay black and, and trans, uh, activists as well. It wasn't just about getting equal rights for black Americans, but it was about getting equal rights for everybody. They believed in a lot of community in initiatives that I never remember hearing about. She has a whole page in here. I don't even know if I can find it right away. And there's also a very helpful glossary at the back. Um, but Oh yeah, the Black Panther platform and party. We want freedom. We want power to determine the destiny of our black community. We want full employment for our people and end of robber to the robbery by the white man. We want decent housing fit for the shelter of human beings. We want education for our people that exposes the true nature of this decadent American society. We want education that teaches us our true history and our role in the present day society. We want all black men to be exempt from military service. We want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. We want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county, and city prisons and jails. We want all black people when brought to trial to be tried in court by a jury of their peer group of people from their black communities as defined by the Constitution of the United States. And we want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. So while I remember that they were an activist group, the things that stuck out in my head was we want freedom for all people, all black people held in prisons. That uh, when I heard it out of context in high school was nerve wracking to me because I didn't understand the systems behind black incarceration. Uh, I didn't understand why black men should be exempt from military service because I, I heard that separate from understanding the whole systems. And I think that plays into perfectly to one of the other things that they talked about in education around the real history of the United States. So I really appreciated, there were several other things. Uh, Pullman Porters were called George, after George Pullman, who was the founder of the Pullman coach cars and the trains. There were so many things in here that I learned that I was so excited to learn. She actually mentions uh, John Steinbeck and how he portrayed the Dust Bowl as the biggest migration of people trying to survive. But really the greatest migration was the black migration away from Southern states who were lynching them and threatening them uh, and their survival and, and what they chose to leave in order to try and help their family survive. So, oh, another thing, Kent State. Uh, I remember hearing about Kent State and, and the killings that happened there around Vietnam. But what I didn't remember hearing, and I have a friend whose brother actually was uh, severe, like paralyzed in, in Kent State. I, and, and so yes, those things were, were awful and horrible. But that same week, there were two other protests that happened at historically black colleges by National Guard members and other um, police that killed and injured black teenagers that were protesting and not a peep 
was heard from any of the news sources that were not black. Just things like that. The more we leave out those things, the deeper the, the, the fact separation goes because we're not operating from the same understanding of what actually happened. We're only getting half of the story. And so when black people are rightfully saying, I had to learn your history and my own on my own time, it's really, really time for those white people, <laughs> white people, we need to step up and learn this history that we weren't taught. And then we need to make sure that it gets included in the curriculum that our kids are taught. So highly recommend this book. If you are a teacher, I really recommend it. There is nothing that I saw objectionable in here. I think even for junior hires, um, different excerpts out of here would be great if you think too much, if it's too much for, for one junior high kid to read. But highly, highly recommend, at least at a high school level, this needs to be part of the curriculum. So Blair Amani, thank you. You did a great job. I will talk to you more later. Pick this one up. I know I will be purchasing it. So thanks.